Big announcement from you guys. I want to get clarity on the relationship between Intel and Waymo and what this means for the way self-driving technology is going to be advanced. Back in February, Waymo made a big deal of the fact that it's going to develop the hardware and software for self-driving in-house. Uh, now, you're a part of that, but in your view, is anything changing? How big a part is Intel going to be? Sure. I, I mean, we've had a deep relationship with Waymo for, for quite a long time, uh, helping them develop and bring the technology to market. And, and really what we're doing, John, is bringing our silicon leadership, our Xeon core, our Intel, uh, Intel architecture, x86, uh, together with their IP, their intellectual property uh, around sensor fusion and actually how the car sees the world and does the, the mapping and all of the world. So this is a great case where two companies coming together, bringing their strengths. They are absolutely bringing the artificial intelligence in this case, the mapping, the, the, the sensor fusion. And we're bringing the compute, the driving, uh, and the silicon technology to, together with them. And Brian, I also want to ask about artificial intelligence. You have an announcement today that Intel has invested a billion dollars in the AI ecosystem. Uh, NVIDIA, your rival, has also been just going gangbusters, the stock has anyway, on AI expectations. It's about tripled in the past year. Bank of America Merrill Lynch says, similar to other successful tech industries, we expect the $30 billion AI chip market to also feature one dominant supplier. We think NVIDIA. Why are they wrong? Yeah, they're, they're absolutely wrong. I, I think when you look at the AI industry, you have to look at, um, one, it's in its infancy, right? It's just beginning. The, the technology is just starting. And, and rather than a singular solution like the GPU uh, guys are bringing, what we're bringing is really a, a wide swath of solutions. And so we can go, you know, we acquired a Nirvana for the highest performing uh, technologies. Uh, we we hired uh, we acquired Mobileye. We've acquired uh, Saffron. We've acquired Movidius for down on drones and mobile devices. So we have the largest collection of technologies we can bring to artificial intelligence. And at the end, we don't think any one of those solutions. We can also bring our FPGAs, which in video analytics and video AI is actually one of the strongest uh, uh, pieces of silicon to be used in architectures. So we've got a wide variety, and artificial intelligence is not one solution. And I think the autonomous mm. car is a great example. Look who's winning there. We're winning. You see the Waymo uh, announcement. You've seen the announcements with Mobileye and Intel, with, with BMW, Fiat Chrysler, uh, uh, VW, uh, and there are many more to come. So Intel bought Mobileye, and before you guys did that transaction, Mobileye and Tesla had a little bit of trouble uh, working together uh, back in 2016. Why is this relationship with Waymo going to be different? Another uh, you know, autonomous driving company that wants to control the whole vertical experience. You know, I think one of the big differences is um, the level of engineering and the depth of the, of the capability that you see in Waymo. And, and, you know, really they have the most number of miles and the most, uh, some of the most advanced technology out there right now with self-driving. And we've been with them for quite a while. We've been developing this, this capability with them for some time. So, so this is really just really solidifying this relationship and really becoming public with it. Uh, and telling the world that we're going to go even deeper. You're going to see us building custom silicon and custom uh, technology for Waymo. And that's a bit different than the relationship that was going on between, you know, say, Mobileye and Tesla, which is really a vendor-supplier, yeah. uh, you know, kind of relationship uh, there. Although I do wonder, and, and Brian, thank you again for joining us. It's Kelly and I. I do wonder... You know, having Hi, seen Kelly. Google's ambitions in the chip space already, you know, why can't they ultimately bring this technology to bear? Why do they need you guys long term? Well, I mean, for one thing, fabs are, are hard and this leading edge technology. I mean, autonomous cars and AI in general, it, it is one of the great examples of using Moore's law more than more than anything else. And so if you're building a technology for the long haul, and you know that it's going to benefit and really grow by Moore's law, then what do you do other than partner with the, person, the, the company that leads and really drives Moore's law? 
And so, you know, I, I think that's why they're coming. They're, they're bringing their own intellectual property. They're bringing the, the compute and their models of artificial intelligence for this. They're going to work together with our Xeon, but also our connectivity, like 5G connectivity. So again, we have the ability to bring a lot more of the technology. When you build one of these cars, you have to yeah. really think of the bumper to the data center. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.